Hey, Faith Mama, I'm so glad you're here. It's your girl, Dominique here, and we are on the Faith Mama's Tribe YouTube channel where we talk about how to walk by faith and kick fear to the curb. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, then sis, you are in the right place. And today, I want to talk to you about my 14-day water fast. Yes, you caught that right. 14-day water fast. Y'all. It was absolutely life-changing and really, really hard. And I wanna tell you a little bit about it. Before I do, quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a sister in Christ telling you about my experience with the 14-day water fast. So before you do anything like this and tell somebody that Dominique told you to do it, I need you to go head on and talk to your doctor. And for everybody here that are only here for the results, I get you, sis, I was you. I scanned to the ends of videos too, just to see the results. Here are my results right here. You can tell the difference. I know I can. I lost 20 pounds on this water fast and I felt absolutely amazing. So this video is going to be a combination of telling you my story and also giving you some encouragement along the way. So I hope that you'll watch the whole thing now that you see the results. All right, here we go. 14 day water fast. So at the beginning of September, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I realized that I was encouraging everybody to walk by faith, walk by faith, walk by faith. And I was walking by faith, except in my health. Yeah, no, I wasn't walking by faith in my health at all. Actually, I was walking by fear. And how do I know that? Because I was eating my feelings. Because when everything, any, ever anything stressful came up, I would just eat them. I would look at my body and I would look at my energy output and I would feel all this pain in my body, but I don't want to do anything about it because I was too afraid about the time commitment. I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to be consistent. I was afraid that, you know, I was going to put in all this work and I wasn't going to see any results. So instead I just sat on the couch and I ate and I knew that my body was not functioning at his it's optimal, but I wanted to do something about it, but I didn't think that what I could do about it would actually change it. You see, I have something called diastasis recti or diastasis recti, I don't know. Basically, that means that I had really, really big babies and in the midst of labor, my abdominals separated a little bit, actually a lot of it, there's 10 finger gap in between. And I was pretty sure that I, you know, I was probably always going to be in pain unless I got this surgery and all this stuff. So basically I was just walking around in fear. I didn't believe that there was anything that could change it, the back pain and all the pain that I was in. Um, I constantly got asked, you know, when's the baby due? Congratulations. How far along are you? And I'm like not pregnant at all. I had my last daughter two years ago and she's about to be three. And those comments were absolutely crushing, but I mean, I got, I understood why they were asking me. I did. I looked about six to seven months pregnant. And so I just didn't do anything. I sat around and I lived in fear when it came to my health. And that's the reality of it. But in September, I was in so much pain and I got tired of just living in a body that I was abusing ultimately. And I sat down and I prayed to God and I said, Lord, I need your help to fix this. I need your help to know what direction to go. And God sent me on this journey of a 14 day water fast for my health. I've never done anything like this ever. So I'm not even gonna tell you that I was like a water fasting pro, no. Let me tell y'all, my diet before the water fast consisted of junk on top of junk on top of ice cream on top of junk. Like that's pretty much my diet. And so when I went on this water fast, um, it was a jolt, it was a shocker to my body, but it was also a shocker to my mind. At that time, just like any other time in life, I went through a ton of, of stressful events. There was so many things that were happening in the midst of it. And all I wanted to do was eat ice cream, y'all. I had realized during this fast that food had become my crutch. It had become the thing that I went to whenever anything was painful, whenever I was experiencing something that was difficult. Food was it. It should have been God, yeah, but it was food. And I was embarrassed to realize that, but I was glad that I was realizing what was happening and why, you know, I was eating so much all the time. And it was because every single time something stressful would come up, I would eat. I mean, that was real. And when I was on the fast, stressful things came up and I immediately got an urge to eat. Like, I didn't get urges to eat at certain times. Like they talk about when you fast, you'll be hungry around breakfast or you'll be hungry around lunch and you'll be hungry around dinner time based on your normal cadence. But you see, my body didn't have a normal cadence because I just ate all the time. 
but what my body did respond to was stress and every time a stressful event happened it immediately sent me into a serious craving for not just any food but for junk food for breads for over processed foods for fast foods and my body my 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 tongue would literally salivate because I was, I had such a strong craving, such an intense reaction to stress that told me to eat, which let me know that my body had formed a code in my brain that this is when we eat. We eat when we're stressed, we eat when we're overwhelmed. And it was difficult the first three days to kind of retrain my body um, and basically say, nah, we're not gonna do this. And it was hard, it was really, really hard to let to tell my body, no, we're not gonna go and get this burger because you're stressed. We're not gonna go and get this pint of ice cream because you're sad. We're gonna have to find other ways um, to deal with the emotions. So I picked up journaling. Um, I did a lot more talking to God, a lot more praying in order to get through the water fast. Okay, so that's one thing that I learned on this water fast that I wanted to share with you and encourage you on. And the other thing that I learned is something that I will take with me for the rest of my life. The scriptures tell us about self-control over and over and over again. But the funny thing is that it doesn't say anything about having control over other people. I don't have a control over my husband. I don't, have my, I don't have control over my kids. I don't have control over my job. I don't have control over the offices and the departments that I want to work with or I'm partnering with or whatever. I don't have control over none of them. The only thing, the only human that the scriptures gives me control over is myself. Now, I just want to clarify here. The scriptures does say that we have authority and dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, all the things that creep in and crawleth over the, the well, you know, that stuff. But it doesn't say we have authority and dominion over each other. So this is the point that I'm trying to make here. It's not that we are some weaklings and, you know, we have no authority or power of anything. It's just that we don't have authority and power over other human beings. Let that sink in. And this water fast taught me, you're so worried about trying to be in control and control your spouse and control your kids and control your situation and control this and control that, that you have, you have not even been concerned about the thing that you are supposed to be controlling, which is yourself. Like, I realized that I had just let food rule my life, let fear control my life, let confusion control my life. And although I was in pain and my body hurt, and although the only person that could do something about it was me, I wasn't used to taking care of me. I was not used to taking care of me. I was used to trying to micromanage and control everybody else that I didn't have time to take care of and to control the one that God actually told me to control, which was this girl right here, like me. So I went on this water fast and just a quick, a few quick things about what I did. Um, I drank just water. A couple of days when I felt really weak, I would take some electrolyte supplements, some, um, a couple of things. I'll link them in the description box below. Um, but for the most part, I drank just water. I drank a gallon of water every single day and I told people that I was doing this. And the reason I did that is because accountability helps me to stay accountable. And so I realized, hey, Dominique, you're at a place where you do need external accountability. I mean, you gotta be real with yourself. I was not at a place where I could do this all by myself. I was not there, I was not there. I don't know that I ever will be there. I don't know that we as humans are really supposed to do life by ourselves, but you know, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Every single day was a challenge. I got to day seven and I was so excited, um, but I wanted to quit because, not because I was hungry, um, but, but just because I wanted to like chew food. <laughs> I, you know, I was so used to chewing, like I wanted to chew food. So let me tell you about just kind of the, the ebbs and flows of fasting. Um, I watched a lot of fa uh, fasting videos that encouraged me. That's another thing I did was watch other people's testimonies. So just in case you're on this video because you are interested in doing a water fast, I pray that this encourages you. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of what happened to me um, so that you think it not strange if it happens to you. So the first three days, like I said, were really, really hard. Um, I was really confronted with um, a lot of cravings, a lot of stress was inducing a lot of my cravings, and that was really, really difficult. But after day three, um, I pretty much didn't have any hunger. 
Like I was not hungry anymore. There, my, my body wasn't telling me like, you need to eat, you need to eat. That was not happening. Um, and so all I had to deal with was the stress cravings. That was my main thing. Like the cravings that came up when I was stressed. And honestly, that went on for at least 12 of the 14 days. So maybe, maybe between between 10 to 12 of those 14 days. So majority of my fast, I dealt with these stress induced cravings. It was not, I was not hungry. It was just, I got really stressed and my body was like, go get some ice cream. I got really stressed and it was like, go get a burger. Um, and then about day 10 or 12, that thing broke. Like it was the first couple of days and it was only like two to four days left of the fast, but that I actually was able to maneuver through stress using some new strategies that I had and not um, relying on the old strategies of eat your feelings, right? Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, were you energized? I had peaks and valleys. So there was times where I was really, really energized and there was times where I was really not energized. And what I learned was to just kind of roll with my body. Typically, I would wake up and I would have a pretty decent amount of energy throughout the morning. And then I would see that energy slowly decline. And as, uh, instead of trying to push, push, push myself, I would just I would just let it decline. Like, I was like, okay, it's time to go into more of a rest mode. And as you guys know, I have four kids. So, I mean, you can't let it decline but so much because your kids are like, mommy, 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 mommy. Um, but I, I, I was okay with not being able to accomplish all that I would do if I wasn't fasting. I've watched some videos where people were like fasting like awesome and they were able to do so much more than they could do when they weren't fasting. That was not my story. Um, I had I had decent energy in the morning, but I did get tired um, in the evening. I didn't work out. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't do, I, I did go on walks a couple of times, but I didn't like push myself. I didn't try to burn a sweat, work up a sweat. Uh, my goal here was not to burn calories. My goal was to number one, get my control back, take my control back. Um, and number two, begin to change my body from the inside out with its cravings and things like that. So those are the major goals. Um, so I wasn't trying to like sweat and do all that stuff. I was like, look, I'm gonna let my body rest. I'm gonna get my control back um, and and be able to tell my body no when it's no, um, and be able to let my body know that, hey, you're listening to me now, not your cravings. So, you know, new sheriff in town type of thing. And so that's what I did. And the reason that I wanted to come on here and tell you guys all about this is because I believe that God wants us to walk in this way. And what do I mean in this way? I believe that God wants us to take our self-control back. We're so trying to control everybody else that we're literally letting the body that God gave us just completely be an afterthought for us. Like we are trying to control everyone else and all the other situations. And when they don't go the way that we want them to go, we abuse our own bodies. Like what in the world? And God was showing me that. He was like, look, you're so busy trying to control, you know, this situation and that situation, this person and that person, that when it doesn't go your way, you put, you put the abuse back on your body and you put stuff in your body that you know causes you to have issues, causes you hurt, hurt and pain. You put excess sugar in it, which you know causes you to bloat, which causes extra back pain. Like whenever something that you want to control on the outside doesn't go the way you want it to, you abuse yourself self and you've got to stop doing that and take back your control so that you are not like at the will and whim of these random cravings that are not doing your body any good i believe that god is like if we want to walk by faith if we want to walk by faith we've got to stop just saying it right We've got to actually walk it out in every area of our lives. Even if that means that we fall on our face a couple of times, right? That's fine. That's fine. Peter fell on his face a whole bunch of times and Jesus still used him to, to go and take the church forward. I mean, Paul was over there doing crazy mess and Jesus still used him. So even if you fall a couple of times, sis, get up and walk by faith in these areas, in the area of your health, walk by faith in the area of your parenting, walk by faith in the area of your marriage, walk by faith. In the area of all these things that we forget, you know, sometimes we talk about walking by faith so linearly, but we forget that it's also my health. And what does that look like? That means that I'm going to stop listening to the cravings. I'm going to listen to God in the area of my health. Like, I mean, it sounds like what we should be doing, but for me, it was revolutionary. Like you're reading the Bible and you're doing all of this and all the other areas of your life. 
But when it comes to your own health and how you're treating your own body, are we really listening to God? And that's what I had to realize. I wasn't. Sis, I was not listening to God. I wasn't. I wasn't listening to God. I was abusing myself because the things that I was trying to control weren't going the way I wanted to. So I was cramming my face with food that didn't serve me well. And I was sedentary. Um, yeah. And I think about walking by faith is that oftentimes it feels weird when you start doing it. So when I started this health journey with this 14 day fast, it felt strange. And after the 14 day fast, then the real challenge comes of keeping the weight off that you did lose as well as continuing to lose more. And that was a challenge because what happens is right after I lost those 20 pounds, guess what happened? I started to gain, of course, water weight back and it could have been discouraging and I could have been like, you know what, I throw in the towel. But I remembered I'm not doing this for the weight loss, I'm doing this for freedom. I'm doing this for freedom, to walk in the direction that God is. And God is always in the direction of freedom. So I gained about seven, almost seven pounds back. And I will be honest, I was discouraged. And my friend told me, okay, Dominique, what you're going to have to do is because now you're taking in calories, you're going to have to work your body. You're going to have to get moving. You can't live the same sedentary lifestyle and the rest-based lifestyle that you were when you were allowing your body to rest through a fast. Now you're going to have to get up. You're going to have to move. And she was right. And guess what? When I started to do that, that weight came off like that. I went right back down to where I was um, and then lost even more from there. And so I'm really, really excited about that. But it just, it makes me realize that we can't get discouraged because of what the scale number list looks like. We can't get discouraged because of the stress. We can't get discouraged because of all the things. we got to trust God. God, I will continue to follow you in the direction of freedom. And for me, the direction of freedom is the direction of health. Lord, I want to be healthy and well while I'm walking on this earth. As healthy as I can be, right? As healthy as I have the control to be. And one of the things that I realized is that one of, I was not putting food in my body um, with the intention of serving my body and stewarding the vessel that God has given me. And today I want to encourage us that when we look at faith, not to look at it through such a narrow lens of like faith means reading your Bible or faith means um, praying and faith means praise and worship. No, Faith also means stewarding my body well. Faith is a whole life practice. And this 14-day water fast taught me that if we walk by faith in the area of our health and follow God in that area, we will see results and change. We don't have to stare at the scale every five seconds. It will come off because God is in the direction of freedom. And yes, it's going to be hard. It was hard. It was hard. It still is. I mean, I'm only six weeks into this health journey, celebrating six weeks of consistency. Ooh, ooh. Um, but like I said, you know, it's still, there's still challenges, right? There's still challenges. You know, I still have the accountability. I still have, <sighs> I still pray regularly about this. Um, and there's still challenges, but God is good, y'all. And I'm just telling you that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen, as Hebrews 11, 1 says. And we have to walk in that faith in every area of our lives. Like, I realize don't leave any area of your life secret from God. Like, don't try to hide away an area. Give it all to him. Find his direction in all areas. Like start with one area. If it's health, start there. And he will give you a strategy, I'm telling you. You'll come across videos. He'll show you, you know, give you some direction. I mean, I, I just know from my personal experience that if we invite God in, to every area of our lives and every area of our life begins to change. If you enjoyed this video, would you subscribe to this channel and go ahead and click the alert bell so you never miss a video. I will be back here every Friday for our Faith Friday story and to encourage you to walk by faith and kick fear to the curb. Together y'all, we can encourage one another to continue to follow Christ toward freedom. And I pray that you would join me along this journey, whatever it may look like. I'm so excited that we got to spend today together and I look forward to seeing you next week. And if you want to continue to connect and you don't want to wait till next week, then I encourage you to join the Faith Mamas Tribe app where we can continue to connect, support, and encourage one another to walk our everyday lives out by faith. 
Love you, sis. See you soon. Bye for now.